Welcome to this edition of Valor Media. This is episode number 89 for October 18th, 2021, with your host, Lori Riston. Hi, welcome to today's podcast. I'm your host, Lori, and today's episode is entitled, The Truth May Hurt, But It Never Harms. Now, you may not have realized it, but I was away for two whole weeks. I was on vacation in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and it was beautiful weather and a really awesome time with friends and family. And while I've been gone, Mark has been sharing some insightful Valor Excel episodes designed to help your organizations thrive. And if you didn't have a chance to listen to those yet, please make sure you take a moment because he always does such a wonderful job taking everyday life situations and tying them together in such a way that shows how a business can operate more effectively with the time-tested strategies that he shares. But I've got to say, I'm really glad to be back because when I go on vacation, I really don't go on vacation. That's because I can't seem to tear myself away from work. To be very honest, I have a tendency to be a workaholic. But that's only because I love what I do so much that it really is a labor of love. Heck, I even worked on this episode while I was away because I just couldn't wait to share more life-changing principles with you from Celebrate Recovery. In today's episode, we're going to pick up where we left off several weeks ago. Just in case you're new to the podcast, Celebrate Recovery is something that I really believe in. That's because the program helped me when I was going through a very difficult time in my own life, and it taught me how to get back on the right track. That's why I want to share this amazing info with you so that you can benefit as well. And for those of you who don't know, Celebrate Recovery is a Christ-centered 12-step recovery program for anyone struggling with hurts, hang-ups, or habits that mess up our lives. And their overall intent is to help people understand the purpose of personal responsibility and encourage participants to let go of the past to focus on the future. So let's do a quick recap of what we've been learning in this series. First, we talked about denial and how it keeps us stuck in our pain. After that, we learned that we're powerless to fix ourselves or the situations that we find ourselves in. Then we talked about hope. Now, during that episode, I shared that since God cares about us and loves us no matter how many times we've messed up or failed or taken the wrong path in life, we need to trust Him and open our hearts to Him. And when we do, it gives us new hope. We then focused on who or what we should be depending on as we move towards the thriving life that God desires for us. Now, the last time we were together, about three weeks ago, I told you that you had to do something with all that you've been learning. That's because faith combined with action produces some really powerful results. And we can see some amazing results when we depend on Christ with all of our actions. Now, today we're going to learn that truth changes lives. And of course, not all truth is life-changing. Let me explain what I mean by that. Did you know that an ostrich's eye is bigger than its brain? Did you know that the first bomb dropped by the Allies on Berlin during World War II killed the only elephant in the Berlin Zoo? Did you know that the average person falls asleep in seven minutes? And that more people are killed annually by donkeys than in airplane crashes? And lastly, did you know that in order to escape the grip of a crocodile's jaws, you need to push your thumbs into its eyeballs. If you do, it will let go of you instantly. Now, you may not believe what I just said, but all these are true statements. What is also true is that not one of them requires any kind of response on your part. These statements are nothing more than trivia. But even so, truth can make a difference. But the key to a successful life is knowing what kind of truth is essential. Evaluating our lives can be challenging, but when we do it, the truth we discover can be life-changing. When we're honest enough to look at our lives and appraise how we're living, the truth about what we need to do next can be eye-opening. Now, some people spend their entire lives making excuses for the past, complaining about the present, and fearing the future. As a result, they don't get the opportunity to walk down the road of healing. But just how do we get to the truth about our lives? Well, There are five ways. First, you need to set aside some time to get to the truth. What that means is you have to schedule an appointment with yourself. Set aside some time, maybe 10 to 30 minutes each day, to be alone with God. Journaling is a great way to make the most of that time. When you set aside time to get to the truth, you can journal your thoughts, your feelings, and your desires to God. Then have Him write you back. Now that may sound silly to some. But you can do this by asking God, 
What do you have to say about what I just wrote? Or what would you have me do in this situation? If you step out of your comfort zones and give it a shot, you may be surprised by what transpires. When I first made Jesus the Lord of my life, I wrote in my journal every single day. I would spend time in God's Word, the Bible, learning all that I could about how God wanted me to live. And I used the Life Application Study Bible and wrote notes on the parts that really spoke to me. It gave me a richer understanding of the scriptures, and I probably have about five notebooks full of information that changed my life. God tells us in Job 33, verse 33, Listen to me, be silent, and I will teach you wisdom. The habit of setting aside time to spend with God is extremely valuable. It allows us to slow down long enough to get the proper perspective for our lives. If we do, it won't be long before we start seeing positive changes that help us to move toward the thriving life that God desires for us. Next, you need to rely on God to get to the truth. Relying on God gives us courage and strength to do the work and not give up when we grow weary. We need to rely on God to help us through the tough times. Psalm 31 verses 23 and 24 tells us, Love the Lord, all his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but the proud he pays back in full. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Now, I love this verse because it reminds us that courage is not the absence of fear, but the conquering of it. Now, you probably don't know this, but when Valor started back in 2008, we were very intentional about choosing the perfect logo for the organization. We were three women raising families who knew that God was birthing something from our desire to help women get out of crisis. As we prayed, we came into agreement that the lion would represent the ministry and its purpose was to reflect courage. And that went along with the name we chose, Women of Valor, because valor means courage in the face of danger. We knew from our own experiences that sometimes changing your life for the better could be dangerous. We knew it could cost something and some people aren't ready to pay that price. So our goal became helping people find the courage to change. And where did that courage come from? Well, it didn't come from us, that's for sure. We were simply three determined friends willing to come alongside other women to encourage and equip them towards a better future. It was their willingness to get honest about what was going on in their lives and then turning to God for help that made all the difference. And it can make all the difference in your life too. Next, you need to unearth the past to get to the truth. Now, I know, I know you're probably thinking, unearth the past? What the heck does that mean? Well, think about your bathroom cabinets for a minute. If you're like most people, you probably have stuff in there that's older than you. And if you want to find something you need, like medicine or some health or beauty contraption that you haven't used in 20 years, you'll actually have to clear out tons of stuff in order to unearth and find what you're looking for. Once in a while, you'll even get the urge to purge all that junk. Well, it's through the cleaning process that you find a ton of garbage that's been sitting around just waiting for you to throw it out. That's what unearth means, to uncover the past by going through some of the garbage in it. This isn't easy for some of us, and it requires us to do something, which most people would rather not do. But it's important nonetheless. Why? Because if we don't look at our past hurts, It's like putting a band-aid on a deep wound that needs stitches. It will never fully heal until you open up the wound, clean it out, sew it up, and let time heal it. The band-aid will never work alone. Some of our pains are like the wound needing to be fully healed. You've tried the band-aid, denial, anger, acting out towards others, but beneath your actions, you still hurt. I dare you to rip off that band-aid and throw it out. Open your heart and mind and allow yourself to feel the pain of your past, which you have blocked or denied. And if you unearth your past, you're going to be able to see the real truth. Then, once you identify that truth, you need to express it. Here's what Job said in Job 7 verse 11 about being open. He said, Therefore, I will not keep silent. I will speak out in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Is there something in your childhood or background that happened which you're not allowed to or can't talk about openly? What or who do you resent? What do you fear? These are some questions that may help you as you work towards expressing truth. If you don't confront them now, the feelings that you hold on to deep inside will turn into resentment. And resentment means offended by or not like, and it results from burying our hurts. If resentment is covered up or left to decay, 
It will cause anger, frustration, and depression. That's because what you don't talk about, you will act out destructively. Think about it this way. Pretend that your hurts are like a soda can. Each time you get hurt and you keep your feelings inside, the soda, your hurts, shakes and shakes. Eventually, the can will open and spray soda over everything and everybody near it. Well, the same thing happens when you hold in your resentment. It will fall on anyone near it and cause a huge mess. Now, I have a fear of going to the dentist, and that's because growing up, I had a dentist that used my mouth as a mechanism to enlarge his checking account. And that's another story for another day. But I've come to realize as an adult with a more reputable dentist that even though it may hurt while I'm in that dentist chair, I'm much better off after each visit. Why? Because the dentist I have now is not there to harm me, even though his dental instruments and procedures may hurt me. That's why we must address our fears. Because our fears can paralyze us and cause us to stay stuck in negative circumstances year after year after year. Fear will also prevent us from expressing our real feelings and taking an honest look at ourselves. Joshua 1, 9 tells us, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Asking ourselves some tough questions is only the beginning of unearthing our past. As you work through it, don't get discouraged. Just realize it's a necessary part of the healing process. Next, we need total recall to get to the truth. Total recall is writing everything down in a life review. A life review is a list of events of our past, both good and bad. Seeing our past in writing brings us face to face with the reality of our character, both our strengths and our weaknesses. Our life review becomes a discovery of who we truly are. If we just look at the bad things in our past, we'll distort our lives and open ourselves up to unnecessary pain. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 40 tells us, Let us examine our ways and test them. Now this verse doesn't tell us to examine our bad negative ways and stop there. No, we need to focus on both the good and the bad in our past. Unfortunately, some of us neglect to balance our lives that way. As a result, we become trapped on our path to healing, or worse, we've judged the evaluation process to be too hard or painful, and we've stopped the journey altogether. This can cause us to slide back into our old hurts and habits from the past. If this describes you, then maybe it's time you get honest with yourself to get to the truth. To do an effective personal life review, you must go from denial to honesty. You can't just put your faults behind you until you face them honestly. We must all step into the truth of the present and evaluate our true feelings, our motives, thoughts, and even our dark side. Proverbs 20 verse 27 says, Stop listening to instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. Sadly, some people just don't want to get honest. They're too comfortable in their delusion to lay it all on the line and deal with all the facts. Others get nervous at the thought of being honest about their past. But being honest with ourselves isn't intended to defeat you. Quite the opposite, actually. It's intended to build you up and get your life moving in a positive direction. Like I said, there's pain in the process. But in the long run, getting to the truth will benefit you immensely. God knows our past, all the good and bad things that have happened. And yet, <laughs> He still loves us. We should look to Him to give us the strength and the courage it takes to look closely at our past so that we can come clean and face the truth. If that scares the daylights out of you, then maybe you need to reach out to others for help. You're going to need someone you can trust to keep you balanced on both the good and the bad. Someone to encourage you and support you and even share in your pain. Valor's personal development coaches can do just that. We want to come alongside of you and help you on your journey towards a better life. Just contact us at info at thevalorcenter.org and we'll put you in touch with one of our staff members who will reach out to you to help you get started. In the meantime, I encourage you to check out Valor Ministries' two life-changing books, You Were Made to Thrive, Seven Strategies to Move You from Crisis to Thriving, and the Companion Goal Setting Workbook. These books are designed to help you start living the life you've always dreamed of. You'll be amazed at what you can achieve once you start putting these strategies into action. You can find more information or purchase them through Amazon in paperback or Kindle version. 
Or you can also find them at www.thevalorcenter.org slash products. If you'd like to get up-to-date information about Valor, you can connect with us on our websites at www.thevalorcenter.org or www.valorexcel.com. Or you can find us on Facebook at Valor Ministries or Valor Excel. We'd love to connect with you on social media, so reach out anytime. Oops, I almost forgot. Would you please take a moment and like, share, and subscribe to this channel? If you do, it will really help us get the word out about these life-changing episodes that can help people thrive in both life and business. Then, don't forget to tap that little button so you can be alerted to each new episode. You can also email us at media at thevalorcenter.org and let us know what topics you'd like us to cover on future podcasts. We want to make sure that we're producing content that is relevant to you, so reach out anytime. If you'd like to find out more information about Celebrate Recovery or find a group that's meeting in your area, visit www.celebraterecovery.com. You know, Celebrate Recovery really is a safe place to find community and freedom from the issues that are controlling your life. You'll also find a ton of great information on their website, and you'll be able to purchase books and other resources to help you get started. So check them out. And lastly, would you prayerfully consider financially supporting us in our efforts? As a nonprofit Christian public charity, the only way we stay in business is by generous donors like you. If God prompts you to give, please know that the funds you provide are tax deductible and they allow us to create even more content that help people thrive. Just visit www.thevalorcenter.org and click on that donate button to give securely online. Or you can send a check or money order to Valor Ministries, 324 East Antietam Street, Suite 104, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21740. I'd like to thank you for spending some time with us today and hope you'll come back again for next week's episode. Until then, remember this, you were made to thrive. <music>